Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing well. Welcome to yet another edition of Topic of the Day. In today's video, we shall be discussing about the ozone hole. Now, this topic has recently come up in news as a Canadian researcher from the University of Waterloo has claimed to have identified an ozone hole over the Earth's tropic region that is even seven times bigger than one we have over the Antarctica. So, let us discuss a bit about ozone. First of all, it is a highly reactive gas that is pale blue in color and it is composed of three oxygen atoms represented by O3. Further on, it is both a natural and a man-made product that occurs in the Earth's upper atmosphere, what is known as stratosphere and also the lower atmosphere that is known as the troposphere. As we know, the Earth's atmosphere is divided into different layers from the surface of the earth till around 10 to 12 kilometers. So we have the troposphere that is the lowermost layer and then we have the stratosphere till around 50 kilometers. Further on we have mesosphere and then thermosphere and likewise we have the exosphere. Now the ozone layer is naturally present 23 to 25 kilometers over the equator. So we can say that it is naturally present in the stratosphere and it protects us from the harmful UVB radiation. We will further look into the classification of the ultraviolet radiations and the thickness of this ozone layer is measured in Dobson units. Now let us see what is the good and bad ozone. First of all, the stratospheric ozone or the good ozone is formed naturally through the interaction of solar ultraviolet radiation, UV radiation with the molecular oxygen. Another one is the bad ozone. This is also termed as the tropospheric or the ground level ozone. And this is generally what the humans breathe. It is formed primarily from the photochemical reactions between volatile organic compounds, for example, the hydrocarbon chlorofluorocarbons and the oxides of nitrogen. Now, if we say an ozone hole, it is an area where the loss of ozone gas is 25% more than the undisturbed atmosphere. Or it can also be defined as a region where ozone concentration dips below 220 Dobson units. 220 Dobson units. As we have studied, Dobson unit is a measure of thickness of the ozone layer. Now, let us see the causes of ozone hole. So, first of all, the ozone gas itself, the O3, in the presence of ultraviolet radiation, it disintegrates into the oxygen molecule and nascent oxygen, and it is a highly reactive gas. Therefore, a reversible reaction keeps on going in the stratosphere. So, when the atmospheric pollutants like the chlorofluorocarbons are released, the chlorine breaks down from CFCs after coming into contact with the ultraviolet radiation of the sun. Now, these are reactive elements and therefore, they tear the ozone layer. Further on, this chlorine also reacts with the oxygen molecule and hampers this reversible reaction. So, therefore, it is harmful to the atmosphere. We can say that one chlorine atom can destroy 1 lakh ozone molecules before it is removed from the atmosphere. Now, let us see the effects of ozone layer depletion. First of all, as we know, it is cancer causing. It also disturbs the photosynthesis rate of the plants. Therefore, it affects the physiological and development process of the plants. Further on, it also affects the foundation of the aquatic food webs. And it is also responsible for climate change, that is for regulating the stratospheric temperature. So, let us briefly see the conventions for the protection of ozone layer. We have the Vienna Convention. That was the first convention for the protection of ozone layer. It came into force in the year 1988 and it was to promote the cooperation among the nations by exchanging information on the effects of human activities. It was against the use of propellants or substances that were used for refrigeration. Most common was the CFCs and the brominated hydrocarbons. But this convention was not legally binding Therefore, came the Montreal Protocol. So, this was adopted in the year 1987 and it came into force in the year 1989. But the Montreal Protocol allowed the use of hydrofluorocarbons, HFCs. Now, since the hydrofluorocarbons are greenhouse gases, it can lead to increase in the temperature of the earth. Therefore, the Kigali Agreement was signed in the capital city of Kigali, that is capital of Rwanda, in the year 2016. And around 197 countries, including India, China and the United States of America, agreed to reduce the use of hydrofluorocarbons by roughly 85% of their baselines 
by the year 2045 and that is by amending the 1987 Montreal Protocol. Now let us know a bit about the UV radiation. So the ultraviolet radiation is part of electromagnetic light spectrum that reaches the earth from the sun. It has shorter wavelength than the visible light and therefore it is not visible from the naked eyes. Now the UV radiation is further classified into three types according to the wavelength. It is UVA, UVB and UVC. The UVA has a longer wavelength around 320 to 380 nanometers and it is 95% of the UV radiation reaching the earth's surface. It generally has a very high penetration power. And then we have the UVB which has shorter wavelength that reaches the outer layer of your skin that is the epidermis and it is absorbed by the earth's ozone layer. The third one is UVC. Now this is blocked by the ozone layer. The UVC radiation is the highest energy portion of the UV radiation spectrum. It is harmful to the humans but it also acts as acts as germicidal and it is also useful in the purification process. Well this was a little bit about today's topic that is ozone hole. Now let us take up a practice question. Consider the following statements. First, ozone is measured in Dobson units. Second, the Vienna Convention is the first convention for the protection of ozone layer. And third, the Kigali Agreement calls for the reduction of use of hydrofluorocarbons by roughly 85% of their baseline by the year 2045. Now, which of the given above statements are correct? You can choose from the options and you can write your answer in the comment section below. So as we know, all the three statements are correct. Therefore, the correct answer is option D. That is one, two and three. And with this, we call it a wrap of today's edition of Topic of the Day. I hope you liked the video. I will see you with some other topic tomorrow. Till then, take care and do stay tuned.